And so the last video, the reason it was cut down, why you only got the sphere and part of the cube was because the video stopped recording and I ended up having to run out and do some things and get some things done. So um, I'm going to do the cube. So this is what we're doing. These are the, the um, shading patterns. If a light is hitting, so the light source is over here. Hits the outermost edges just to refresh you. And um, so then we're going to be finishing up the cube today. We'll do the cylinder. And then I'm going to do the cone. We'll see about the pyramid. Because the pyramid's a lot like the cube. Right? If you do this, then you pretty much can do that. Um, but I want to do the cone instead. So I'm going to try and keep this within these three. We're going to finish this one up today, move on to the cylinder, and do this one. Um, and I think for the cylinder, I'm going to make the cylinder hollow. And then, or maybe I'll try to do it both ways on the top, but we'll see. We'll see. I want to try to get the rest of these in one video. Okay. So, enough of me. I hope you guys are all healthy and safe and happy. And I know this last bit of information about school was disheartening for all of us but we'll, we'll we'll work through it we're pretty we're a pretty great school so we'll do this all right so let's get you oh that's my husband over there <laughs> he's playing games well I do this for you so down on the paper we go all right all right so as you can see um, in the last video I think I was just starting this so this is the top which is the lightest then the light source coming in this direction so see it hit here now it's going to hit there this side would be the medium values and this side is of course the darkest because it's farthest away and i'm going to try and get i'm holding the camera so i need to fix this so i can so i can draw while you guys watch okay all right, so so nothing is going to get as dark as right here, and of course, because we're talking about flat edges, unless we're on a shiny surface, there's not going to be a reflective light. And the other thing I'm not doing is I'm not doing cast shadows for you guys because that's not something I want you to worry about right now. Right now, we're just trying to figure out um, how to create the form of an object to make it look with you know a little bit of perspective but like a circle yes you can do a circle in perspective but to make it look like a ball or a sphere you really have to do the shading and that's why this the sphere gets so much attention because really even in perspective you're not going to get that form you're not going to get that three-dimensional aspect without shading a sphere so that's why that one is so important. Okay, um, so there's going to be a line. So this is going to be darker over here than even this last darkest part here. So this is going to be the lightest part here, which will be darker than here, but it's going to be lighter than here. Okay. So, because I don't want it to be as dark as here, and I don't have my kneaded eraser, let me see if I can find one. I found a brand new one. Alright. <clears throat> Let's open this. I know you guys probably don't all have these at home but I want you to get the visual effect. If I can open this. It's beating me. Oh, oh. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Ah! All right, I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that. All right, never mind. I give up.
So dark, darkest. This can be tricky, guys, because the values in one pencil are just so close in range that, you know, it can be hard to get that light, medium, and dark without being so close. Um, it, you know, really, artist pencils are, are really beneficial in situations like this, okay? So I'm going to have to go and clean, make this darker while still trying to keep the value. And I am still shading in that diamond pattern. Okay, so there's that. So this edge being much darker than that one is fine. Um, it's this edge right here that we're a little concerned about. Right there, you guys can see it. I think you guys can see that better than I can. That's cool. Alright, so, of course, from this side going up we get lighter. From this side going back we get darker. Okay? And I, I will continue to work back and forth so that I'm sure that I have that variation and the um, shading that I need in the proper so see how it's getting dark right in that where I'm cross hatching right there you want to be careful of that because you want it all the same it's flat it's not indented there where the light is that's better okay so now I'm going to build up the mid range so it's got to be darker than here but lighter than here And they have to blend. You can't have a, a line for each um, yeah, diamond pattern. And again, I'm doing this as quick as I possibly can so you guys get to see it, which means it's probably not as good as it could be. I really want you to do the best you can at this. Take your time. I've tried to give you, you know, not just a day to do your projects. You've got like a, I think a week at least to get this done so you can do a little bit every day. Maybe do one shape a day. You know? One, like, do a sphere one day, and then do the cube the next, and then do the cylinder, so on and so forth. Give yourself a break in between so that you are not getting burnt out, and also so that you can do your best job on each, each object. Okay? So, I'm going to lift this up. You see that? Okay, that gives us the form of a cube, now, albeit it's not wonderful, but it is, I think that's a better, um, good example, and you guys can, you guys can make your uh, diamond pattern a little smoother in its blending. Um, I'm going to move on to another clean sheet of paper to do the cylinder. Is that what we're doing next? Uh, yes, we'll do the cylinder and then I'm going to do the cone. And if I have time, I will do the um, the pyramid. But I definitely want to get these done. Okay? So, oval. And of course, this is another mimicking oval to that. But we don't see the back of it, so I don't typically draw the back of it because that'll just get in the way. Okay. So it's really sketchy again because I need to be quick. So light source, right? Boom. Outermost edge. Outermost edge. If I go straight down the middle, 
oops, straight down the middle. It's going to hit all along here. So right about here is going to be my lightest point. So I will start at the edge, knowing it's going to be light, and have to go blend into the lightest point. Okay. Also, if we're doing interior, this light is going to come in and it's going to hit here on the inside, right? Which means the lightest point is going to be over here. That's going to be my light point right there. Lightest interior point. So that's where my white will be. So that's like if we're making a cup or something that you can see down in. Okay? So if that's So let's just go ahead and do the shading. And I'm going to get really much as light as I can. And again, you guys are going to want to be cleaner. And then I start to get dark again. And as I get darker, It should start to take on the visual look of being not just a drawn cylinder, but it should really have the form and look of being being a cylinder, being something like a pipe that is standing up. Okay? So once So notice how I'm going back over and blending to make sure that I have what I need for value. Each shade is very important when it comes to this. I want to get my darkest value in there. And then, once I have my darkest point, then I start getting light again. And the reason for that is that reflective light I was talking about. Where this light, because this is round, is going to actually go around the object. So then, this edge is has a little bit of light. Okay? But this edge should not be as light as that edge. Because it is wrapping around, so the light will be more diffused. Okay? Alright, so we have the outer part. If we're doing this on the inner part, we're going to do the same concept, except we're going to, this is our lightest point, and we're going to, so we're going to work our way from there. Okay. Progressively getting darker and light. So as, so just like this is the lightest point, the darkest point is going to be farthest away from the darkest point as well. And then it starts to get lighter. So then you have the interior and exterior. And because of how the light hits it is why we see that this is curved back and this is curved forward. Okay. So that's shading it to look hollow, like we could put something down in there, 
right? Now, if we were to do that perspectively, it would look really cool. And doing it perspectively, in particularly with one point, is what they use for trompe l'oeil art. So all that street art where it looks like you could walk down into something or climb, climb a wall, um, that's trompe l'oeil. Okay? Here we go. I know, I say that a lot. I'm trying to get better. All right, so let's see. Where are we at time-wise? Oh, we're not too bad. All right, let's see if I can get this done with a flat top. Okay, so with a flat top, we're, the light is actually going to do a cascade. So if my light let's see, comes across, and comes across and of course then it hits but notice if it hits the top the lightest point is going to be over here whereas the lightest point on this one was right here right in this area so it was opposite of where it hit here this time is kind of that cascade so it's going to fall over the edge so this is what I mean so we're going to do, we're going to go light, when the light hits, it's going to get lighter. But what happens is that it's also going to do that back here. Okay. Now the top is flat, so it's not going to have that reflective light, like the bottom. So. And again, remember, this side's going to be lighter than the darkest point, but not as light as the light at you know, this other side. Okay. So you get the, oops, that's really dark. Clean it up a little bit, because I really want you guys to do a better job at this. I am really trying to just give you the idea of what it is we're working with. I need to do a little better up here. So it's going to be farthest away, lightest. Okay, so you still have your reflective light on the side, you know, the side of the object, but you don't have it on the top because the top is flat, so it's just straight across. See how that works? Let's see if I can get it in there better. Okay, see the difference between the two? One looks like a solid cylinder, and then the other one looks like you could put something down in it. So down in it, solid. So we could lay something flat on top of it. Okay, that is the cylinder. All right, you guys can watch that. And then I think because we're at like almost at 20 minutes now, um, I'm going to just do the cone and then... Um, Let's not worry about you guys. Act you can try the pyramid. I would love to see you challenge yourself to do that. But I'm not going to worry about the pyramid. It's so much like the cube that if you do the cube, then, then you're probably pretty good. Cube and cone, and you're probably pretty good on being able to do the pyramid. But I really... Here you go. So we'll draw the cone. It's drawn. Choose our light source. It's going to hit the outermost edges. So the tip of the cone 
course, and then this side. Right? So, like the cylinder, it will do that reflective light. And the trick with this one is the light. See how I'm making these kind of triangular, but. Here's where it gets tricky with the cone. That line still does come all the way up. It's just it gets very, very thin at the top. Each each value, um, each shade in that value scale gets very, very small, but it's still there. So it can be a little tricky when you're coming all the way up. So I think it, it might benefit you to very, very lightly because, of course, you've got to blend this still. This being your lightest side. Getting a different pencil because that one is needing to be sharpened. And I don't feel like listening to my own sharpener today. So there's, there's that. So we're going to get even lighter. So we don't want this top to just automatically look dark because we've, we've shaded it all the same up here. Or we've gone over it and over it and over it because a cone is circular even up here. Still doing good, all right. All right, so now I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna start getting darker. This next one's going to be even darker. But again, we're going to blend them. one to be just a little bit lighter. Okay. And then not as light as here, but we want it to be a little bit lighter. Okay. Right. So Again, and I'll keep saying this because I really want you guys to really get the most out of this as possible. I want you to do your best work, but see how now that does not look like just a triangle with a curved bottom. Okay, now it looks like it's going to pop out of the page. So, that's creating form with shading. And it's very important that you understand that because when I ask you to do seven elements in your artwork, this is part of the seven elements is being able to understand that, that form and how it works. So you're using value. You're using the action of value, which is shading, to create form. This is form when you're actually filling in that object and making it look solid or tangible, like I could touch this pencil or I could touch a cube or the cone or the sphere or, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and it's that 
ability to make that illusion of is that cylinder something I can put something in or is it something that has a flat surface is it solid so keep up the good work guys I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of your creating scales that's due April 3rd and then you have this one I forget the due date it is in the Google Classroom next to the assignment if you guys are I'm um, still trying to learn how to navigate um, if you get it you log into the Google Classroom um, and then you'll see up at the top um, where it says classwork you want to click on that and that'll have a list of all the assignments and I, I try to correlate these with that so this is our next project is I want you to create these the um, the only one I'm not going to have you do is the pyramid I, I nix the pyramid just one time but also um, and if you have time please do it but so there's there it is guys so there's you're going to be doing all right you're going to be doing a cone the cylinder with a open and the cylinder with a flat and you're going to do a sphere and a cube now most of you or some of you I know have watched the video for the sphere because you're making comments about when I'm gonna make the next post well as soon as this video is done I will upload it and you will have it okay so and then a refresher shading patterns in order to shade and create the form of your objects okay and here we go here I am just what you wanted to see me again huh <laughs> I miss seeing your faces. I hope, see, he thinks I'm silly. But uh, I hope you guys are staying healthy, happy, safe. And I, I pray that I get to see you in the fall. And maybe, maybe things will clear up enough that we maybe can go out in public a little more not too long from now and be able to, um, they touch my face. Uh, Maybe I'll see you out in public. I don't know. A couple of you live in my neighborhood. I saw one of you walking by the other day with your parents. I won't make any names. I won't say any names at all. But you're a little blonde. Um, I wanted to say hi, but I was busy. So, uh, I miss you guys. So, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. I'll talk to you again on my next video. Bye, guys.